Hey everyone, and welcome to my explainer video for a new activity that I've made called the same or different. This is a communicative challenge that requires students to practice both speaking and listening comprehension, as well as to work on their vocabulary that they need to use for precise descriptions. But before we get started, here's a little joke for you. Why do both tigers and zebras have stripes? So they don't get spotted. <laughs> this activity is designed to help students improve their listening and speaking skills. This exercise is short, interactive, and highly focused, requiring students to communicate with one another to complete the task. Students work with partners in pairs, each partner having slightly different information from that possessed by the other. The information appears on separate exercise pages, one for partner A, one for partner B. In each of these exercises, accurate listening is as important as speaking in the completion of the task. Here's an example of a worksheet that I made. It's easy to follow and more importantly, simple to reproduce. With this activity, once you get a good template, it's just plug and play, copy and paste. The first time through any activity may be a little rough, but if you follow these simple instructions and limit your teacher talk and support it with a lot of examples, I think it'll work a charm in your classroom. The language that I'll use to present this activity in this explainer video is directed towards my elementary aged students who are at the beginner level of their English experience. You might want to make the directions a little more complex or a little more rich in language. Figure out where your students are and meet them there. The first time through any activity, but especially this one, may be rough, but gradually through practice, students will become more comfortable with the exercise. So try not to worry too much if your first time isn't your best time. Have your students look at the picture. Have them look carefully and try to notice the details that might be useful in helping them describe the picture to their partners. Now, you don't want to give them too much support here, as the descriptions should be as spontaneous and as varied as possible. And students should be discouraged from using like set grammatical patterns. There's no one right way to describe any picture. With that being said, once students have looked at the picture, they describe it to their partner. Students use whatever language is available to them to describe that picture for their partner to identify as either the same or different. Then students switch roles and the speaker becomes the listener. The listener listens to the partner's description. And finally, together, they decide. Were their descriptions the same, or was there something noticeably different? And they write their answer in the blank next to the picture. When they finish the exercise, they should review the answers with their partner, making sure to discuss their mistakes and any problems that they had. Then, if you have time, they should repeat the exercise, either with the same partner and a new paper, or with a different partner and the same paper. All right, now let's give it a try. Let's see how it might sound in your classroom, with you practicing using and understanding language used in description. Let's start out with the first page. Instead of using the normal A, B, to label each page, I use characters from the movies we watch in our English class. This character is named Ben, and he is student A. Student A has the picture in the left column. That means this student starts speaking first. They're the first student to describe the picture. Student B's paper is labeled with a picture of a robot. This robot is named Moby. This student has an X on the left column. This student listens first. Their picture is in the right column. 
When they've finished listening, it's their turn to speak, their turn to describe the picture. In this example, both pictures are the same. The students might describe the picture by saying, I have a microphone. The microphone has a wire plugged into the bottom. The on off button is on the top of the microphone facing up. The screen of the microphone is facing right. As you can see, if both students describe the picture in this way, they'll find that the picture is the same. They'll see the similarities in what they have said and recognize that this picture is more alike than it is different. Picture number two describes a computer. The student on the left might say, I have a computer. There's a mainframe and a monitor. The monitor is behind the PC. Student B would say, oh no, the monitor in my picture is on the left. I also have a keyboard and a mouse. Player B could say, I don't. Using these types of description, trying to highlight the really finite details of each picture will make differentiating between a similar and a different picture far easier. At first, I like to start out with pictures that are easy to describe and simple to understand, where the similarities and differences are pretty easy to identify. Once students get the hang of how the activity works though, I like to mess around a little bit. I might uh, mirror the image from one paper to the next. I might rotate it 90 degrees. I might delete a small detail from one picture and leave it in the other. As you might imagine, I really like this activity because these types of exercises give students the chance to participate in both using and understanding language in asking and answering questions. It's promoting active speaking and active listening. How about you? What do you like about this activity? What might you tweak or change or modify to help fit the needs of your learners? Would you even try it in your classroom? If you do, be sure to let me know how it goes. And a final word in closing. You can have better students because you can become a better teacher.